Most people who play Magic don't actually know what the most powerful card in Magic is because it's an anti-card. Greetings owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles and welcome to my complete history of anti in Magic the Gathering. A lot of you aren't going to be aware of what anti is, but way, way, way back in the infancy of Magic, there was a particular style of play that we all adhered to that they got rid of a long time ago and that was anti and how it worked was you were actually playing for each other's cards. So after you had decided who was going first in the game, then you would anti cards up off the off of your deck. Now it's supposed to be a random card from your deck. The traditional accepted method was to just flip, like shuffle up your deck, cut it, get ready to start playing, and then flip the top card of your deck into the ante. So both people put one card into the ante. Whoever wins that game of magic gets to keep both of those cards. So you were gambling. That's how you started when you started playing magic. That's how it was when I started. Anti was a thing. There are nine specific magic cards printed to be used with anti. Now, none of these are allowed in any sanctioned format. All anti cards are banned in all forms of sanctioned magic. If you're playing with your friends and you're playing for anti, obviously you can use them. But anti cards can't be brought in unless you are specifically playing for anti. So, this gambling aspect was brought into magic to add a bit of spice to the game, to basically be like, okay, hey, look, we've got some, you got some skin in the game, you got some stakes, and I can tell you, it, there is a lot of fun to the anti aspect. There are some real bad hurdy sides to it as well. I remember I traded for an Underworld Dreams from Legends, and it was a super rare, super hard card to get. Like, this was a card a lot of people wanted, and I had one, and it came up in the anti in my first game, and I lost it before I ever even got to play with it. Now, there were variations on anti as well. There were variations where you were allowed to double anti. So let's say, for example, you anti your Underworld Dreams and you don't want that to be the anti. Then you would flip over two cards in its place, the next two cards off of the top of your deck. And bear in mind that basic lands were not put in part of the anti. Everyone always would just set basic lands aside, not in the ante, and those go into your starting hand. So you'd set aside the basic lands and then draw the rest of the cards to get to a full hand of seven. That is how people played ante. There were other variations as well, uh, crazy extreme variations like overkill ante, where the concept is however much damage I do to you to kill you, that takes you below zero, that's how many additional cards I get from your deck. So if you're at 20 life and I do a 40 point fireball to you, then you're now at negative 20 and I get 20 cards from your deck. So anti was pretty crazy. Honestly, it didn't last that long. Wizards of the Coast phased it out because they decided that there was a real issue. They were looking at getting the game into uh, like a tournament setting in terms of going to churches and other, like other places, other halls to hold magic tournaments, but they were concerned that it would be considered a gambling event. And then that as a result, only 18 years and older would be able to play it, right? So they decided to remove Anti from the game and it was perfectly fine to make that choice because by then most people had actually gone ahead and given up on Anti. They, they had all, for some reason or another, it had just kind of fallen out of favor. I know specifically why it fell out of favor with my group, because I broke Anti, personally. And so as a result, nobody would play with me. So we'll talk about that. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about every card that was used for Anti, or mentioned Anti, I should say. Not every card that was used for Anti, but all the cards that reference Anti and interact with them. And there's nine different cards here. So, all right, so I have my list of the nine anti cards here and we'll go through them all specifically, starting with Amulet of Quas. This is a six casting cost artifact. Obviously all anti cards specifically state if you're not playing for anti, you have to remove them from the game before you start playing. Now what the Amulet of Quas does is zero and tap, sacrifice it, flip a coin, target opponent calls heads or tails while coin is in the air. If the flip ends up in your favor, that opponent loses the game, otherwise you lose the game. So essentially what it does is this is an artifact, you sack it, and then the game becomes a coin toss. Whoever, whoever wins the coin toss wins the whole game. Now, 
Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to prevent this loss of life. The, the language here is hilarious. The old school language. Uses the ability only during your upkeep. The opponent may ante an additional card to counter this effect. Okay. So, basically, sacrificing the amulet is part of the cost. So when it says they can ante up an additional card to counter the effect, that means that the amulet is gone as well. So the options your opponent has are put another card in the ante or we're going to flip a coin and the game will be over. One of us is about to win or lose. So as you can see, there's certainly an element of weird unfunness to this. Honestly, Amulet of Quaz is one of my least favorite anti-cards. It feels clunky and unnecessary. And yeah, you can put the game down to a coin toss, but your opponent can decide just an anti a card. And on top of that, you can only do it during your upkeep. So it's really an underwhelming card in terms of anti. And you'll find that there are varying levels of power with anti cards. The second card we have is one that I'm a much, much bigger fan of, and that is Bronze Tablet. This is, again, a six casting cost artifact. This one comes from Antiquities. Four mana, four mana to activate it. Now you target a permanent that your opponent has in play, right? You get to remove that permanent from the game, and you permanently own it. So let's say your opponent had it like a Mox Pearl. You could be like, I'm going to sacrifice my Bronze Tablet to get your Mox Pearl. The Mox Pearl gets removed from the game, I own that Mox Pearl now. That's actually my property. So at the end of the game, regardless of who wins or loses, I own your Mox. And now you own the Bronze Tablet. And if I'm not mistaken, let me just double check. I believe it went to your opponent's graveyard. Um, uh, four mana. Target a card any opponent has in play. Remove it and Bronze Tablet from the game. Okay, so it doesn't go to the graveyard. So the Bronze Tablet and the Mox would be removed from the game. The Mox becomes yours permanently. The Bronze Tablet now permanently belongs to your opponent. Now, they do have the ability to prevent the exchange by paying 10 life, all right? So they do have that option, and that means that the bronze tablet is destroyed, so it ends up going to the graveyard. So this is, this is really interesting because it lets you permanently take one of your opponent's cards, which feels like, oh my god, that guy can literally take anything up. But you can just be like, no, I'm just going to pay 10 life, and then that just doesn't happen. So that's okay. But then you get into the point where what if you don't have 10 life, and then it just gets... The anti-cards get into ugly territory with the whole property thing. Anti being gone is not is not a bad thing. It doesn't fit into magic, but it definitely, it definitely was fun and interesting at the beginning. Then we have Contract from Below. Now, I previously mentioned the most powerful card in magic. That's Contract from Below. This card is absolutely the most powerful card in Magic. I don't care. Lotuses, Moxes, they're all fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But Contract from Below is so overpowered, it's insane. One black mana, discard your hand, draw a brand new hand of seven cards. And all you have to do to get this new hand is ante up an extra card. So you put one more card from your deck into the ante. Yes, that is what you're putting on the line. But you literally get a brand new hand of gas. I have played with this both in the Chandelar online game and in real life. And I can assure you, there is nothing more broken than this. It's absolutely obtuse, the card advantage. You. This card is so unfair. And as a fun little side note, there was a guy a long, long time ago who used to collect contract from Belows. And he would have people sign them when they did a trade with him. So once you were done with a trade with him, you would sign on the dotted line with your real name. And he kept a whole bunch of them. It was really just a fun little neat thing. It has nothing to do with Ante, but a nice memory from the card. Then we've got Dark Pact. This card is the card that helped me break Ante and made it so that none of my friends would ever play Ante again. I had a play group of at least 12 people. They all refuse to play anti because of what I pulled with this. And it'll be pretty obvious to anybody nowadays what I would have done with this. But in case it's not, I'll let you know here. It's three black mana, right? And all, you, all it does is, without looking at it, swap the top card of your deck. So you don't get to look at the top card of your deck. But you're going to trade the top card of your deck for one of the cards that are in the ante. Now the ante is always just sitting off to the side waiting. Anybody can look at it whenever they want. So let's say you anteed up a mox. I could go, okay, I'm going to switch the top card of my deck for the Mox and the Ante. Now I own that Mox regardless of what happens, and then this is just the Ante. So what I did with this card is Legends came out, and there was a card called Sylvan Library that would let you look at the, not let you look at, sorry, it would let you draw two additional cards each turn. But then you had to pay four life for each extra card you wanted to keep, 
or you had to return them to your, to the top of your library. So all I would do is just draw extra cards and then put a swamp back on top of my deck and I would play Dark Pact and I would swap the swamp that was on top of my deck for one of the cards in the ante. Now remember, as I said, we never put basic lands in the ante. They were not part of it. So it would always be some non-basic land I was taking from somebody's deck. It would be, well, even if, even if it was a dual land, I don't think we played with the... Uh, with them as anti, but I can't remember. I can't remember that part. It was so long ago, in all honesty. Either way, I replaced both cards in the anti with swamps, and then I would just concede the game and put two swamps back in my deck because it was faster for me to just keep losing and go to the next game and take the ante than it was to sit there and play out the whole game and move on to the next round. So it didn't take long before my friends were like, dude, we're, we're so not doing this. We're not playing ante anymore. This is absolutely ridiculous. So I have fond memories of Dark Pack. Plus on top of that, the artwork is gorgeous done by Quentin Hoover. Quentin Hoover has such an amazing and specific style to him. I really enjoy it. Then we have Demonic Attorney. This one is three mana sorcery. You have a choice. Your opponent can either concede the game right away or you both ante up an extra card. So in terms of, in terms of um, ante cards, this one's not terribly disappointing, but it's also not terribly exciting. It's cool because you can just toss it in your deck and then if it looks like you're going to win, you can just play it to go. I'm getting an extra card or you got to fold. So it's cool that way. But it's not really big or flashy or fun. Or, you can't do crazy things with Demonic Attorney. It just lets you milk an extra anti-card out of them. Jeweled Bird from Arabian Nights is the next card we're going to talk about. That's one colorless. It is, uh, basically it taps, in case you don't know, because we're using the original Arabian Nights artwork, you'll note that it is a mono artifact. There were mono and poly artifacts back in the day. And essentially, a mono artifact is just an artifact that nowadays has a tap symbol on it. So you tap this jeweled bird. You tap it to draw a card, and then you exchange the jeweled bird for your contribution to the ante. So basically, you take whatever card that had been taken from your deck out into the ante, you replace that with the jeweled bird, and then you take your card from your ante and put it into your graveyard. So the card you started out with as the ante is now in your graveyard. The jeweled bird has moved into the ante and exists there now. This is one I didn't like as well, because I'm like, why am I going to dedicate an entire slot in my deck like to get rid of the jeweled bird? It's just, it's just felt... Nowadays, I don't know, maybe, you know what, as a way of protecting yourself from losing your best cards, it actually seems okay. You could try and trade for the Jewel Burke back afterwards. But I remember not really caring for this card originally when Anti was being used. Rebirth is a very interesting Anti card. This one is six mana, and each player has the option to go back to 20 life by anting another card. So whatever life total you're at, if you're willing to ante another card right now off the top of your deck, you go straight to 20. So that's cool. This is not a card that I saw used very often though, I think because of the symmetry. It doesn't just let you do it, your opponent can do it as well and they're back to 20. So this didn't get much love. Tempest of Freed is one of the most interesting of all the anti cards because of its absolute random nature combined with the fact that it's still a usable body. I mean, it's three red and a colorless to make sure you're only playing in a red deck. It's a three, three creature. You tap it to randomly pick a card from your opponent's hand, and you own that card now. And your opponent gets the Tempest Afrit. So you tap the Afrit, bury the Afrit, which means to destroy without allowing it to be regenerated, into your... And nowadays it would say sacrifice. But anyways, the wording on it was, put it into your opponent's graveyard, take a card at random from their hand, and you own that card now. So that is really cool. Now this one, again, works like the Bronze Tablet, where your opponent does have the option of saying... No, 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 no. I'll pay 10 life to not let that happen. So that's pretty cool, though. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three, tap it. Your opponent loses 10 life, possibly. I mean, there's a lot of fun because you don't know what they're going to do. They don't get to decide whether they're going to prevent the exchange until... Sorry. If they're going to use the 10 life get out of this method, they can't do it until... Sorry. Ah, I'm screwing it all up. What I'm trying to say is... They can't figure out which card you're going to get before they say no to the exchange. That's what I'm trying to say. So, either you go, are you paying 10 life? Yes or no. If they say no, then you actually pick the card and get to keep it. So, it can't be like, I'll wait and see what card you pick. I gain 10 life then. Or not gain 10, lose 10. Wow, it's got me all squirrel. The Tempest of Freed has caused a tempest up in my brain. All right. 
And then we've got Tamarian Fiends. These were the last guys printed for Anti, actually. This was the last official Anti card printed in Homelands. This is three mana for a 1-1. One, one. You pay three black, you sacrifice it, you bury target artifact your opponent controls in your graveyard, and the Fiends in the opponent's graveyard. So this one doesn't have any condition that lets you get out of it where it's like you can go ahead and pay 10 life or anything. It's straight up... Pick an artifact in play, destroy it, but put it into your graveyard. Give the guy, the give your opponent the Temerian Fiends in their graveyard. The exchange of ownership is permanent. So this was the last anti card. I remember being annoyed when I saw it because by then we had stopped playing for anti a long time ago. Everybody had. So the fact that they were reprinting these was a little obnoxious when it was like already well established we were done with this, guys. Like We weren't even using Amulet of Quas from Ice Age. And Temerian Fiends was just, what are you doing here? But I will say this. The artwork on Temerian Fiends is intense as hell. The guy in the background with the horns looks kind of goofy. But the skeletal thing in the front with the extra bits, oh, just the bones on his forehead and everything, it looks terrifying. So, those are the nine cards, the nine anti-cards that exist. You can't use them unless you're playing for anti and unsanctioned magic. So the majority of you will never have heard of or seen these things in action. If you would like to see Contract from Below in action and how broken it is, just check out one of my Chandelar live streams. Chandelar is an old school video game that is based on magic from like 1996 and earlier, and it has Contract from Below in there, and you play for Anti. And I currently am running Contract from Below in my deck, and it's the most overpowered, insane card. You can go empty hand losing a game absolutely going to lose this game pick up a contract from below and you have you're going to win now you'll actually you can chain contract from belows it's insane especially when put together with dark rituals and other stuff contract from below is literally the most powerful magic card in existence that nobody's allowed to play with all right so this has been my history of anti it's been very interesting to go back over my memories of all of this. It's been so long, decades and decades ago, when Magic... I mean, if you think about it now, that would be insane. No one would want to sit there and play for Anti, right? With the cards all being what they're worth. But when we started, guys, it was just a game you grab off the shelf like Monopoly. Completely different world. So, it's been an interesting time tunnel back to my past. We will see you next time. Hello, hello, hello. This is Enrique, all the way from Portugal. I'm here just to say that I was about... 20 years without playing magic but now i'm back and i love this channel and together we are the six color of magic